All right, thank you guys for joining us again for another episode of Black Coffee and Crime. Uh, hope y'all like the new schedule. We kind of like the new schedule. Um, but, you know, so it, it's working out for us. Well, hopefully it's working out for y'all too. Um, I'm Brandy. We also got another Brandy W and Jackie here. So the, the crew is all here together again. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about um, the OnlyFans model, a little bit about that OnlyFans model who was um, arrested finally after killing her uh, boyfriend in April. And also Chester Turner. That's the guy we're going to talk about. He was a serial killer in uh, Los Angeles during the 90s, the late 80s and the 90s. Um, and yeah, it took forever for them to kind of connect the crimes together. So, yeah. Um, for those people who are new or you know, it's been a while since you've seen us. Just a quick run through. Um, <clears throat> we're not law enforcement professionals. We do this for fun. We find things on the internet to talk about. If we misspeak or if you have information that we did not mention, hey, let us know. Uh, comment on Facebook, Instagram, or on one of the videos on YouTube. Uh, but be nice because um, we just be nice because I cuss a lot and they go to church, but I don't. So. There's that. I go to church and I cuss. Oh, she go. Oh, she cuss you out with the, the Holy Spirit, saved and sanctified. Read that she can give you. Um, Brandy cusses under her breath, but <laughs> 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 so there's that. All right, um, we ain't gonna be before you long today. Uh, we ain't gonna be before you long. I am on location. I am not at my desk at home. I am. Um, shut up in a room hiding from a two-year-old so if you hear noise in the background it is her so we we, we gotta we gotta hurry up because she coming she ain't seen me in about a half hour she, she's looking for me i know she is all right all right let's go y'all okay so it seems like uh, back in april um april of this year there was a girl an instagram uh, only fans model and what is an instagram model i don't is that a is that an occupation? An Instagram model? I think it's more of an influencer than a model because you're basically I mean people have sponsorships and uh, I, I don't know what an Instagram model uh, they're not really a model so no yeah. uh, we know what the OnlyFans model is and I ain't really mad at people mm -hmm. on OnlyFans because you know, if you can make some money um, showing pictures of your feet, I really ain't got, can't really say nothing bad about you because you really have life figured out. Okay, um, so listen, looks like, so Courtney Clinty or Cleany was arrested a couple weeks. An Instagram model is described as a person who got famous just because of Instagram. Oh, that's um. Oh, the translations would be so loose nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. So loose. Oh. I'm gonna get that's Instagram cool. famous and become a model. Yep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that's, that. That's literally the description. <laughs> do that. I'm good for going to look up. Something. Now, OnlyFans is different because you know people are actually paying you. The the people, the populace, are paying you to look at whatever content that you're putting on there however um plain or provocative it is so that's different but she uh, was only fans of instagram model she's 26 she was ar finally arrested on august 10th for the second degree mur murder of her boyfriend christian Al albonselli i think that's what his name was she stabbed him to death in april like wasn't it like 27 times or something like that? She stabbed him a whole bunch of times. Um, then she invoked the Baker, <laughs> was it the Baker Defense or Baker something, Brandy? Baker Act or something like that. Where basically you you know, you get put into like a short-term mental facility and you can't, you know, you can't talk about it. And you know, it kind of protects you a little bit. But finally they did arrest her. Um, there were already reports that she was very violent against him. And then recently they released a video on social, well, I saw it on social media 
where she mm-hmm. was lighting him up Solange Knowles style in an elevator and he's a big guy yeah, and he was he, not engaging no no he was <clears throat> like he was really defending himself um there was one time that he did like kind of bear hug her from behind just to get her like immobilized or whatever mm-hmm. but she was lighting him up but she even before he came into view in the elevator she was I hate to use this word because people want to cancel you over using this but she was spazzing the hell out in that elevator even before he got in there yeah on the um, way in there. on the way in and she I mean she was lighting him up like Ray Rice. Like she was really lighting him up. I didn't, did I, did I? I have said that. I have said that. <clears throat> I have said that. But that's what she was doing. That's, that's, listen, I do not condone <laughs> domestic violence. Trust me, I do not. Based on my childhood, my life, uh, people who know me know that I don't. But that's that's what that scene in that elevator looked like. Okay, so I was just giving the people an analogy of what that looked like. That's, that's what it looked like to me. Uh, but she was arrested, uh, second degree murder. Uh, let's see here. Mm, she was, look, she says that she was living in a rehab facility in Hawaii where she was undergoing treatment for PTSD and substance abuse. So, um, little Missy was, you know, stacking up her defense already. Um, I don't know if she had PTSD from her killing him. Yeah, because what PTSD? You know, I don't, I don't know. That's the PTSD. Uh, PTSD, huh? Murdering him. Yeah. So her tells Rolling Stone magazine that um, we're completely shocked at Courtney's arrest based on the clear evidence of self-defense in this matter. Uh, it is an absolute injustice to charge a victim of domestic violence and human trafficking with a crime. When did this human trafficking come in? That was her boyfriend. Like they're out and about vacationing in videos and in pictures. When did human trafficking come in? If we know anything from doing these uh, mm-hmm. murders and stuff, um. Self defense probably would have been maybe three, four stabs. That was literally what I was about to say. To stop him or to incapacitate him or whatever. But anything more than that would be considered a rage killing. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And that's clearly that's clearly what that was. <clears throat> because um 27 times is the knife is slipping. Um and cutting her hands up, hands up. and with a guy that big, because he was a sizable dude, he was well over six feet. Um, I wonder what kind of defensive wounds he has on, you know, maybe his arms or whatever like that. Um, and if it was self defense, where are her bruises? Where are her, you know, we're, we'll have, well, not we, but yeah, us, we, we'll have to see. What kind of injuries injuries did she have? Um, you know, because he got stabbed twenty seven times and she did not. So, yeah, we'll have to see. Because if he was beating her up, and again, I'm not, I do not condone domestic violence in any shape, form, or fashion. But having seen it with my own eyes, um, if a man that size is beating up a woman that size. She really ain't got time to get to know. She don't look like she got her ass whooped. Yeah, she don't really have time to get to anything. She got arrested. She did not look like none of that. She looked like a crying, privileged person who who threw on the waterworks. That's what she looked like. I remember that video because you said Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that story. But I was just very surprised to see it because I think we kind of uh, we kind of lost sight of that story. It was just like, oh, she stabbed him. It was a social media. It was on social media because of his uh, uh, anti-black woman remarks that he had made on Twitter and his Twitter account um, and how it just caused a social media storm about you know people commenting and then it was gone you know like most things right now nowadays it was gone so I was um, really surprised to see that come back so we see more we'll tell you more all right so since we ain't gonna be before you long um, we're gonna talk about Chester Turner 
Uh, Chester Turner was a serial killer in Los Angeles in the 80s and 90s. Um, and he is one of the few black serial killers. And when I say few, it's in comparison to white male serial killers. I mean, there's quite a lot of black uh, serial killers, but in comparison to white male serial killers, it's a very small number. Um, I the, the first time I uh, remember hearing about Chester Turner was on, Evil, was it Evil Lives Here, Brandy? I think it was an episode of Evil Lives Here. No, it was episode of Evil, Evil Killers. Evil Killers, okay. Um, I, okay, yeah. Because it, it was his one of his ex-girlfriends talking about her experience with with him and her discovering that he was wait a was it killer. the lady that had the really short hair and he used to live across the street from her where this would go and yeah, they, they kind of grew up together yeah yeah that was that, him mm-hmm. that was him because I know he was an episode of Evil Killers too yeah I think, I think he was mm-hmm. Evil Killers yeah I remember seeing it on um, Evil Lives Here so I was very surprised because even on that show you don't there's very few um black characters whatever that they talk about on even even on evil lives here so it was really weird because we had heard about Mm -hmm. the grim sleeper and uh samuel little but not anybody else especially in california brandy and i are from california i had never heard of chester little I'd never heard of Chester Little. Of course, we talked about Richard Ramirez. We've heard about him. Uh, we grew up with that monster in the backyard coming through the window, but I never heard about Chester Turner. Um, but basically, uh, he was born in the 60s, 1966 in Arkansas. Um, his parents broke up, so his mom <laughs> moved him out to LA when he was about five. Um, seems, you know, she's single mom, probably he probably became one of those kids who was just you know the first wave of latchkey kids um and uh everything seemed to be okay in his childhood maybe I mean quite it wasn't like you know lilies you know lilies and flowers and everything but he went to but he didn't graduate he dropped out his mom moved to Utah but he decided to stay in California and he basically was just bouncing around from missions to shelters and all kinds of stuff and you know even jail Um, but in the middle of that he became a serial killer a rapist and a serial killer so what they said was he would have been classified as a sociopath who used um who used the women who were probably weaker than him that he saw as weaker than him and used them uh, the sexually motivated killers killings and he would strangle them that was his mode of um of uh, you know that's how he killed them was through strangulation he was also called of course the media dubbed him as the south side slayer um and as with most serial killers he killed women that were in his immediate vicinity like there was a couple women that he <clears throat> killed in left them within yards of the motel or hotel where he was staying at so he would kill them in basically on his doorstep and leave them on his doorstep basically so he was 11 of his murders were sub well was no not 11 he killed 15 including (laughs) an unborn baby he was convicted of that but all but two of his murders they were there within walking distance of where he lived the whole time Mm -hmm. He knew nobody um, cared about those women, so he yeah. wasn't in, in any uh, danger of being found out. Right, just like just like the Grim Sleeper. I mean, we haven't talked about him um, as a complete episode, but the Grim Sleeper did the same thing for decades. Um, he was killing women in South Central, and <clears throat> they were r- literally right there in the alleys behind his house in places that he frequented. And he knew that these women, they were black women. Most, all, all but one of them were, were black women. Um, some of them were on drugs or addicted to, you know, some sort of uh, harmful vice. And, you know, he would, would kill them and just leave them there. Um, let's see. 
they said this was weird but it makes sense um something about domino's pizza mm-hmm. like he was a delivery person for domino's yeah, and we worked there. It, one of the um, articles i read um uh, kind of alluded it didn't say it but kind of alluded to that being like his entry into um his introduction to some of these women was as a delivery driver and that he kind of would know where they lived or where they frequented based on them ordering food. Again, the article didn't say that, but it kind of alluded to it. Um, let's see. So he murdered 11, he was 11 women between 1987 and 1998, um, between Figueroa, uh, Gate and Gage Avenue and 100, uh, 108th Street in LA. So it was like a four, within four blocks. All 11 of these murders happened within four blocks of each other. And they couldn't connect the murders. It's kind of like, did they bother? Yeah. They- I was like, how did they not, could not connect them? I mean, but all right. You know, only one of the murders, someone saw him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he killed, you know, he killed this woman and someone's, another transient saw him do it. Um, but... I have to think those are the two, one of the two reasons. Maybe they didn't really push uh, to, to solve these murders because they were kind of women that were on the, the, the fringes. And then also too, during the 80s, LA was like murder capital. We were talking about the height of gang violence in the, you know, in the late 80s. Did they have time, you know? When they had that many, when they had bodies literally stacked up on the street, like it's, you know, cartel time in uh, Mexico, um, you had bodies everywhere. Like when you turn on the news, when we were growing up in the 80s and the 90s, you turn on the news and every newscast was about another gang shooting, a gang shooting, a gang shooting, a gang shooting. And you would see um, the sheets on top of people and the blood on the street or whatever. So that was like every day. But in the midst of that, I had never heard about any of these women, them finding random ass women in LA. Even the Grim Sleeper, you did not hear about them finding random women, random black women. You did not hear about that. You heard about, you, you would hear about white women, but you did not hear about, you know, five or six random black women found in a year in a four block radius. Like you didn't hear about that, which is crazy because how could it not be the same person if it's within four blocks seems like that would be basic police work yeah it seem like basic detective police work right but we already know um based on other stories we did that uh police departments especially la is notorious for ignoring certain things Mm -hmm. um (laughs) and not investigating only investigating what they want to Mm -hmm. Um, and leaving everything else alone so let's see here um he went to jail like six or seven times between 1995 and 2002 now he wasn't arrested for any of this his first arrest regarding the murders was in 2003 um his dna um they had to take his his dna sample when he was arrested in 2003 that's how they started to connect him. They connected him to the Turner, no, the Vance murder, which was Paula Vance. Um, she was in found the- in Azusa, which is in LA County. So it's not within LA proper. So, the, you know, mm-hmm. this would have been the LA Sheriff's Department. So um, there were only two of the women who were found outside of the city of LA. And she was one of them. Um, and she was the one where there was a witness she was the one that where there was a witness and so they connected him to that murder the sexual assault and murder in that one and then they started to connect the dots with all the other ones um and that's when they really started investigating instead mm -hmm. of investigating forward they were kind of investigating backwards like they knew that he had killed people it was basically matching his dna with cases that they had in the system so they worked the case basically backwards to actually um, figure out how many women he actually killed and who knows if they even found you know all of them but this is true 
Yeah. Definitely match nine. He matched nine for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like, I was like, don't let don't tell how many women that they it, just could not match. Maybe like because he was a sexual predator as well. So what about the women that he actually did sexually assault but not kill? Um, mm-hmm. and the women never reported if they were transient women. Um uh, Paula Vance was, uh, she suffered from a mental illness. So what about, you know, anybody out on the streets um, suffering in some form or fashion and didn't report it? Uh, one, because they were suffering from something. And two, because if they reported it, what were the police going to really do? Um, yeah, clearly, clearly we know that, you know, usually people do start, uh, before they get to killing, they usually... Um, do other crimes before um something that, that they mentioned was also why he was in grade school that the kids called him chester molester because he was very touchy and, and inappropriate with the girls in the school so uh, if mm. he was doing that when he was younger just imagine you know what he did as he got older yeah he ramped it up um one of the, the 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 one of the worst things about this is one of the women was pregnant was about six months pregnant when he killed her. Um, this was Angela Andrea Triplett. Um, she was found partially nude on off of Figueroa in 1993. She was five and a half months pregnant, and um, at the time it says that California didn't have a law that. Uh, at the time that, well, I guess the law didn't consider that pregnancy as a viable, like the baby would have been li- been able to live outside of the womb. But after, later on, he was convicted. That was one of the murders that he was convicted of, um, was that unborn baby. Now, let's, this murder here of Angela, Andrea Triplett, I believe that in that episode of Evil Lives Here, his girlfriend, former girlfriend, Felicia Collier, mentions that she knew her. Mm-hmm. Like when she saw her on the news, like she's seen, now she said in the, that episode that she would see things in the newspaper and in the news. So maybe there was mention in like the LA Times or something, or, you know, um, news comes in different markets or whatever, but we here where we where Brandy and I grew up, we still would have seen, we were still in a Los Angeles market as far as the news was considered, um, you know, visual media. Yeah, a little, for we could have been a little, a little blurb. Uh, um, you know, you'll see a shooting on such and such street happen yesterday, or a body was found in a field behind an apartment complex, and it's just a small little blurb, not really any information other than if, if they have the name or something. And seeing that most of the stuff was committed in around in the same area, that she would have probably come in contact with some of these people, but just from hearing a little bit in the newspaper, a little blurb of of crimes in the area and then connecting it with what people were saying on the street, then probably she was able to say, oh, that was so-and-so who who, who was killed. Um, And I just remember her in that episode um, saying that, you know, she would recognize some of the faces or the names and be like, dang, you know, like I know her, I know her, I've seen her or whatever. And then to find out that it was her ex-boyfriend. Now in that episode, she said that you know they grew together and you know she had a she was in a previous relationship and had a kid and you know he seemed real nice um because she you know she knew him from before uh, but he became abusive at some point during their relationship and she wanted to leave him her father however which i kind of i was so pissed off at during this episode because this happens way too much Um, he choked her out and beat her up in the car and her you know she was like I gotta go I can't do this and her father basically listened to what Chester was saying and was like you know he's a good man he made a mistake you know give him one more chance and so she did and he terrorized the living hell out of her based on the episode Um, and then like stalked her like she could not move on with her life um there was you know in like in most of the episodes on the show you'll the people will be like well he would leave for this amount of time and he would come back with bruises or scratches or this and they would always explain him away same thing with Chester he would always explain away his 
his time that he was away from her and he would come back in some sort of condition disheveled or bruised or have a cut or something and he would explain it away but I guess in hindsight like for us looking at the episodes and listening and watching it doesn't make sense that someone would come back with a bite mark and you're like well you know I was you know I bit myself when you know I was pulling out a splinter so I bit my arm to so I wouldn't scream stuff like that you're like what why did you believe this Mm -hmm. like but I guess I don't know especially considering how dangerous he was just to you right I I didn't understand that and I was like how is this so easily believable when you know what he did to you right is it the delusion like you want to believe that this person is not out there doing something um because my I guess my mind is way too suspicious because I question it every. Every. I mean, if he came home with a bite, you like, is he messing with some woman that they into some old kinky type of she? And yeah, I gotta I check. Hope he well, don't think I'm about to start biting and he gonna be biting on me. Like I'm gonna be thinking, like, what the hell? And then you know, cuts and bruises. You coming home with that too? So it, what are you doing? Are you fighting tigers when you're not here? What are you doing? Um, but I think also too, she didn't probably, she probably didn't want to question him too hard because he was super yeah, violent with her. Probably, probably beat the crap out of him. She did express, you know, it seemed in the episode that she was expressing some survivor's guilt that she was actually <clears throat> was living with him and having, she had a child by him, a son. And he, the, although he, um, you know, he brutalized her quite terribly. He didn't kill her. And, you know, like that survival's, survivor's guilt is kind of like, did he kill those women because he wanted to kill me? You know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm quite sure that that stays with you because your boyfriend kills 15 people and or more. And yet you live and you know these people. And, um, you know, like, how do you, how do you go on from that? Um, Chester was, let me see here. He was convicted. Like I said, he was convicted. Uh, the first 11 murders in 2000 and what year was it that he was convicted of the 11? I know that he got some previous, um, Hmm. No, damn it. I done lost. 2003? 2000 arrested. 2007, he got the death penalty oh, yeah. for the first 11. Then back, and then again in 2014, he got convicted of an additional four. So he's he right now he's at San Quentin sitting on top of two life sentences. Two. So he, but in California, he'll likely die of old age or cancer or something before he actually uh, uh, is put to death. Um, another interesting thing about this is there was another person that was convicted of some of Chester's murders. Uh, David Allen Jones was convicted of three of the murders. Um, he was a janitor at an elementary school And he had, uh, there was a a girl named Tammy Christmas who had been found strangled. And so, go ahead. Wasn't he special needs as well? Yes. Yes, he was. Um, He had been questioned without an attorney. That's why I'm so easy to convict, you know, to pressure him. He already Uh, don't know much. Right. And he admitted to using drugs with the victims in the areas where the bodies were found. Which, if he was questioned without an attorney, again, L.A. is very, and a lot of other uh, police departments are very well known for planting evidence into someone's head. They are allowed to lie. Police are allowed to lie. But also, too, a, an old tactic, not, not even um, unique to L.A., an old tactic that detectives would use is they would sleep deprivation they would deprive you of sleep. Tell Cash to go sit down because I know that's who, I know that's who that is. Um, sleep deprivation. They would badger them for you know for hours. 
and really get the person disoriented. And um, then they're pretty much, you know, they would also do things like, if you just tell us that you did this, you can go home. If you just tell us that, you know, you did this, you can go home, or we know you did it. It was probably self-defense. You didn't mean to do it. And with someone with mental deficiencies, they don't understand the intricacies of the law anyway. And then they're vulnerable and, you know, they convicted him now. Um, he, um, let's see here. He was convicted of the three murders. He could, they said he was barely literate. So I'm quite sure he didn't even write his own confession letter. Right. Um, so he got convicted. He was convicted of a rape, also convicted of a rape that was unrelated to the other murders that he was um, convicted of. Uh, let's see here. He was arrested in 1992. And then... Um, he was finally released in 2004, partly because of that rape, the um, a 2000 rape conviction. So they let him go based on the evidence that they found for Chester, but he still had to serve out his time for that rape. Eventually, he filed a lawsuit and he got $720,000 from um, the city of Los Angeles, which he probably should have gotten more. Because Wait. not only did you convict him on evidence that didn't belong to him, uh, physical evidence that didn't belong to him he didn't have an attorney <laughs> so you violated that man's civil rights he did not even have an attorney present um and he probably had a public defender going into trial who just said just say you did it and you'll get this amount of time and no they won't give you the death penalty and um you'll end up getting out but um you know they let him go after that uh let's see here what else is there anything about Chester? Y'all got anything else about Chester the molester? Nasty. Yeah. If y'all see his mug shots though. He, yes. looks, he looks like somebody you turn around from. He looks like he come walking to us. Yeah, just he looks like he would overpower you. Like he's I've seen recent videos of um there was a video of this guy. The lady was sitting down there, like on a bench or whatever, and I guess he was saying to her, like he wanted her number or her name or whatever, and she couldn't hear him. And then she's like, "Okay, but no, thank you, no, thank you." And he's like, um, "Well, I was gonna let you go, but now I, you know, I'm just gonna." He said something about grabbing her, or I could grab you up or something. You know, I'm not, I'm not no creep or nothing. I'm not, I'm not a creep. And then he goes on to prove himself to be a creep because he's like well you know I could still grab you up and so she's like no no you can't no you will not and he was like yeah because I'm gonna come over there and get you anyway and it seemed like this picture that I'm looking at of Chester Turner is giving off that type of energy like that kind of guy that even if you are nice and say no thank you and be like mm, I'm good like this is you know he's gonna just overpower you um any pictures that I've seen of Chester um, either in court or even still pictures, he does not give off any um, any remorseful vibes. No, nope. um, he looks very arrogant in all of the pictures. Very, he assured. was very arrogant. Um, like I mean, he looks very smug, even in a prison mugshot in San Quentin. He looks very smug. Like if I saw him walking my way, I would definitely turn around. I don't know like, if I would know, turn like around to, you know, like trying to come how you just, Yeah, I don't know if I would turn around because I think he's gonna chase me, or do I just kind of uh, go forward and go around? Like, what do you do? What What do you do? And it's and, and just it's just getting to the point anyway where women saying no is becoming a problem. They are killing women for saying no. Yeah, what's wrong with you? What is going on? You, you follow them, you stalk them, you you beat them up, you punch on them, you rape them, just for women saying no. Just get your game up. Yes. Get your game up. That's it. That's it. Like, um, you know, there's a, 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 a new debate, but I don't think it's a new idea. I just think it's new to people talking about it. 
is um, how men really don't like, some men really don't like women. They just have to have sex with them. Well, they send y'all and um, let me send it. I think it's very true. I've been saying this for a long time that I don't think that, that I do think that there are a lot of men who don't like women. I'm not saying that they're gay at all. I'm not saying that. Please don't think I'm saying that men are gay um, in this instant. Um, but there are men who really don't like women. They are with women because they are sexually attracted to them. I just sent y'all a TikTok. <laughs> but they yeah. actually don't like them no um brandy and i have talked about this but i i no. really think it's true and so no. have this whole nice they, guy the, the idolization of of love is from men with mm -hmm. the love that they idolize is from women. It's, it's they want that type of love from men but women is the ones that are heterosexual it's just they want the actual sex to be with women but any other emotional connection yeah, emotional that they connection have is with men is it it's with, with other men. men it's not it's with me. other men um and i think that because we're in a society that uh celebrates this whole out this old fake pseudo alpha male philosophy and ideology um that even saying that men have a a, a, a better emotional connection to other men they want to say that's gay. No, it isn't because I think women have a better emotional connection to other women. I I totally believe that. I think that women gravitate towards other women when we are very young and we are when we are very old. Men do the same thing. Young when boys they gather together when they're young, and then when they're old in retirement age they gather together again. We only come together as the opposite sex is when it is time for us to procreate. Other than that, we really don't like each other. Um, women, however, well, you, okay. You gravitate to you how to you to people that you have the most influence with, or not and the most in common, and the most, most in common. common with. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. Women have admitted that for centuries that we are more comfortable amongst each other. We are we 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 comfort each other. We gather comfort and ideas amongst each other. Men, however, have been taught that you cannot be comforted, either emotionally or physically, by another man, because that is taboo. And so that is built up this resentment towards women because women are like, I have my sense mm. of comfort. That's my sister over there, so I, I, I'm gonna go get my comfort from her. Like, and then men men are like, but I don't have anybody. And we're like, yeah, you do, but you are so alpha and so masculine that you can't even get comfort from your brother you can't well I can't cry I can't cry in front of another man why not both of y'all need to cry maybe they help some things right if both of y'all crying at the same time that's gonna cancel each other out because he ain't gonna tell nobody you cried and you ain't gonna tell nobody he cried so basically that's what that is but women are okay with admitting that we don't really and I'm and I'm saying we as a collective we don't really care for men like that we like y'all for sex <laughs> we like y'all for sex. We don't need y'all for nothing else but sex and babies. And 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 then in, in this modern times, we don't even need y'all for that. So, women are okay with admit, admitting that. Men, however, are not. Um, but it does create this sense of um, uncertainty and violence against women um, because men are like, "I need you to have sex with me. I need you to hold me. I need you to uh, give me comfort." And the fact that I'm a nice guy. I have, you know, if I'm looking, you know, if I have money, I have money and looks and you don't want me. How dare you? Um, then you have the yeah. men on the uh, opposite end of the spectrum who have neither, who have the nice guy persona. I'm a nice guy, but you're not because you're not, that doesn't mean you're a good person. Yeah. It just means you're nice. So nice not, but you can, not even nice though. Right. No. You think you're nice. You think you're, think nice. you're nice. You know, but oh, nice, but nice. nice is a behavior. Nice is a behavior. Nice is, I'm going to be nice to you. You have to consciously tell yourself, I'm going to be nice. Are you a kind person? Because if you're kind, you do it without thinking. When you are nice, you have a, a, a itemized list of the things good. that you have to do to be nice. And you can't hold that forever. That's good. Because the moment that you tell a nice guy, no, it drops. The I'm being nice to you. You're, how is that nice at this point you're like well let's have to do let's have to do it 
yeah so chester's giving off that vibe and you know a lot of these guys i think i'm gonna watch that um that tiktok um talking about uh it's probably the same one that i've seen uh over and over again but um but yeah well, chester definitely that dude oh yeah i was definitely, definitely like well you know what this makes plenty of sense yeah plenty of sense which i think we have kind of discussed it a little bit amongst us um uh, even on on the show but definitely yeah i try not to just say every day i just feel like every day they show that this is true because at this point i'm not even sure y'all want women i'm really not um i'm really not sure about it I um, think even so. for even for even sexually as and, and, and to some extent because low-key you don't really want that from us she about to start a whole bunch of shit <laughs> in the comments. Indeed. Yes. Because I, I have did. so much to say about that. Um, I did. I have, Oh, I have so Not much that we to have say. a problem with it. You know, we don't I have mean, a problem with that. I mean, it's an opinion. But, it's an opinion. You know, if, if it offends you or if it rubs you the wrong way, you have to question why it does. Um, and, I, and I believe that with anything. If something rubs you the wrong way, then you feel a certain way about it, like you. I don't think, I don't think I'm. Not, I, don't, I don't think I'm the only female. If anything, we will get some rallied up because there's a lot of us that feel this way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At this point, the the like I don't know what happened to my was it algorithm um, to what kind of TikTok, but the women in the world, the women that feel like there is no chance because at this point they don't feel like men really want them. Girl, you know. I, I never cool? felt that, but no, I'm, I'm sure not, that some people. I'm not, I'm not feeling that way. I'm not. I mean, of course, I know there's men that that sexually want me, but the 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 TikTok I sent y'all about, why I think that, you know, I may not be the compatible person that they need or or want. Really, really, I do believe that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a blank. Sexually, I I, I believe I, I'm okay. For, you you're okay with me sexually or being able to uh. Sec- sexually do that with me but anything beyond emotional connection i 100 percent believe because it's been shown to me multiple times so i believe that that could be the case oh, oh she giving cash Are you giving cash or you know her biting on the internet coin <laughs> oh lord she about to go out she about to blink out she about to blink out the dog and did it yeah i i totally believe that that is true um not for every man and not for every woman but um, we are finding, <clears throat> I think it's been true for <clears throat> probably since the beginning of time. This is not a new concept at all. Um, but I think that we are more open to talking about it, socially talking about, uh, you know, the changes changes in gender identity and, and you know, um, renaming ourselves or reclaiming whatever feelings that you have. I think that it's a, it would be okay for any man or any woman to admit that no I do not like the opposite mm-hmm. sex I don't like them um I'm not I, I'm attracted to them because I need sex but I don't like them I don't like anything Perfectly about fine. them and you can see it in certain men that you you know some people that you might know you can just listen to their language listen to their conversations and the way that they talk about other the way that they talk about men their their peers and the the way that they idolize their peers and other men and other toxic ass men examples of toxic men but they b- completely say. bash women we're not we're not gonna talk mm-mm, mm-mm. i was just no i just thought you were gonna say one that's all no i'm not gonna say one oh, i'm not gonna God. say it i'm not gonna say it uh-uh, uh-uh. all right go uh-uh we're not gonna get into it because then then we'll really have them uh yeah i already gonna have them them neophytes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we did say we weren't gonna be before you long so we will go ahead and end this episode maybe one day we'll go live on instagram and talk about because you know instagram can go away we ain't gotta um yeah we say uh, gotta yeah. keep that for you know perpetuity but we'll go ahead and end this episode and i can go back to the demon oh, i'm on tiktok one day do you know true crime is such a big deal conversation tr- it's just massive community. Randy do. hasn't been posted anything, and that I community haven't. is too big. I should. I, I need. I need to. I need to get back on the the ball of doing that. Um, the posting. big community. Maybe we can go live on TikTok and see who chimes in. 
and um, we could talk about crime. We could talk about, because I mean, this is black coffee and crime. So the black coffee is all the other stuff. But we are allowed to talk about that. Why? Because it's our damn show and we can talk about what we want to talk about. Uh, so, so we'll definitely get back to that. Um, you know, I think we're just getting used to this new schedule and, you know, um, trying to do different types of content and, you know, really, uh, you know, um, get to the way we used to have it. So uh, we will return in a couple of weeks with a new subject. We got a couple of d- different documentaries that we've been watching and that we've been talking about. Um, some old digging in the crates murders that um, you have to have been like a true crime fan from way back to know about these murders. So we'll be talking about those things soon. But in the meantime, enjoy that second cup and be safe. And we'll see you guys next time. Good night. See ya. Peace.